the Book of True Life, teaching two of 366. The Master teaches the tasks of Christ's disciples and the hour of trials. Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, Here I am among you in this moment, in which your spirits listen to me and give me their thanks. On each succeeding new year, mankind is full of hope, but there are also those who are fearful. Why do you live in fear of life and of the times? They have always been the same. You are the ones who pass away. Today you are children, tomorrow adults. Today you are on earth, tomorrow you are not. Today you are born, and tomorrow you die. You are in the completion of the times. Your spirit is not subject to the physical existence anymore. It has penetrated eternity. You are atoms of my divinity. I am eternal. I have always existed. The divine spirit never ages. I am immutable and imperishable. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. You emanated from me, and therefore you will return to me. Certainly, each coming year is a mystery for men, but truly I say to you that it is a new step which you shall take along the path of your evolution. Do not fear the future because you do not understand it. Do not envision it enveloped in darkness. Keep in mind that I am time and eternity. Believe that I am in the future. You, my people, know something of what is to come, because I reveal it to you, and among you are prophets who, by my will, penetrate into the future and give you their testimony. You do not have the right to be doubtful. You are not the blind who fear stumbling along the way. I have prepared the way in order for all men to find peace. I have indicated pathways where they will find me in all my truth. O humanity, who have me so near, and you do not feel my presence. I have revealed to you the secret of peace, which is the love for one another. The moment will come when peace will be so greatly desired by men that they will seek it through every means, in religions, in science, and in doctrines. The believers and those who call themselves atheists and free thinkers will all go to the same place in search of that peace, and when they find it, they will be before me. Understand that you are listening to this word now but soon you will cease to hear it. It will not be in this year when this manifestation ends, but only the time indicated by my will, 1950. I remind those who heard me some time ago when I said, my word will descend from the summit of the new mount and you will be at its base to receive it. Ever since the first faculty, whom I availed myself for this manifestation, I said to you that this divine communication, which began in 1866, would end in 1950. And after that year, you would not remain as orphans, because you would feel my presence nearer if you knew how to prepare yourselves. This is the first day of the year of 1941. Therefore, you still will hear my word for ten more years. This will be a sufficient time for many of your brethren to know this doctrine, so that many non-believers may believe, and many of the disobedient will arise by complying with my mandates. My humble and gentle word will be of kindness for the suffering, and it will be like dew and a perfume for all spirits. 
This word will be like a caress for everyone, although many have rejected it, and even gloated over violating it. Do not think that your nation, Mexico, will be the only one receiving my spiritual benefits. No, since the beginning of time, I have prepared a heritage for each one of the nations of the world. My truth will again penetrate all dwellings, as it did during the second era, when Jesus entered the temples dedicated to the worship of God, and surprised with his word the priests, elders, and doctors of the law. Who will imitate me during these times? Who will be the ones who will not fear mankind? Those who will testify to the truth with their deeds. In truth, I say that whoever dedicates himself to express the truth as his master will not even fear death. It is already the time when my word should be resounding within temples and churches, and its echo should have reached powerful men. But it is necessary that whoever propagates it should be purified and cleansed to be its worthy messengers. But consider that the times have passed, and you still have not acquired that preparation. I am not demanding any sacrifice. I only want your deeds to be spontaneous and your love sincere. Nevertheless, do not forget Abraham and his example of obedience and submission when the father asked for the life of his beloved son, Isaac. Who from among men of these times, who love me, would favor me with such an example of obedience, love and faith? My apostles preached my truth, and when men condemned them, they did not run away from death. He who lives by the truth will have nothing to fear. Your path, O oh my people, is sowed with beautiful examples. The light of the sixth candlestick illuminates men of this period but the five previous seals also conveyed their light upon all spirits. When you have arrived before this radiant light, some in spirit and others in the flesh, you have asked yourselves why you were called. Then you have heard that voice which says to you, I am the Lamb who was sacrificed for my love for you, and I have come to illuminate your spirit so that you may love one another and come to me. I come in spirit during this era. My light descends upon men like tongues of fire, so that they will be able to speak of my law in all languages. 144,000 incarnated and discarnated spirits will open the way during this period. They will be forerunners, prophets, and messengers. They are the ones marked by me to go before the multitudes. To these chosen ones will be revealed the name of the tribe to which they belonged during the first era, so that they may realize that since then they made a pledge with their God, and they have followed the path of the Father for a long time. But during this period, all names of tribes have disappeared, for it is not the Lord who sets boundaries to divide men. When, in 1950, for the last time my ray descends through my spokesman, everything will be prepared for the future times. But until that period comes to pass, I will continue giving you my lesson. So, until then, leave your sorrows to me. Rest. And when you have alleviated your pain, when you have dried your tears, elevate your spirit so that my teaching may be in it. I do not want hunger or thirst in any one of my disciples. 
I want to see you satisfied from having been nourished by the bread and wine of my love. Only thus will you accomplish deeds worthy of divine merit among mankind. Keep in mind that as each day passes, the moment of my departure draws nearer, and he who does not take advantage of this period of teaching will later feel like an orphan. Your presence before this manifestation has not been by chance. My voice summoned you along the pathways and guided you here. Now you know that you have come to recognize the mission which you have to fulfill on earth. In my word, you have realized what your beginning is, and also your ultimate goal. You have had the revelation that you are a part of a people who have received the manna of the spirit during three eras. If you study spiritually all that happened to the people of Israel during the first two eras, you will see that the same thing is happening to you during the present time. The life of that people, its history, constitutes a lesson, a parable for all mankind. It is a book of teaching whose law I reveal to you on Mount Sinai. Today, that book is opened before your spirit, and you see new teachings emanate from it. For what you failed to comprehend during those times, today you will understand. Your spirit may knock at the doors of the hereafter in demand of wisdom. Your spiritual capability enables you to approach nearer the Master so that he may grant you new teachings contained in his secret sanctuary. O oh my people, on seeing you traveling the pathways of the world, dragging chains of hardship and imperfection, I send you my love to help you along your course of evolution. You have been walking along a desert, and in the midst of it, I have allowed palms to grow, so that you may obtain shelter and rest. I have made an inexhaustible spring pour from the sterile rock of your heart, so that you may drink and never thirst again. Today, I will not give you fields in the world to cultivate. You will find your fields in the hearts of men. Some have come to begin to cultivate, others to complete their sowing. Let not parents use the performance of their family duties as a pretext for not being able to think of doing good to others. Let not man tell me that they feel incapable of teaching my law. I say to all of you, that along your path, there are more than enough occasions to sow my seed without wasting your time or disregarding your obligations. Serve me, and I will serve you. Do not be disenchanted if on sowing love among your children or your brethren, you reap ingratitude. You are well aware of what Jesus sowed in the world and what he reaped. But he told you that the fruits of that harvest would not be gathered here on earth, but in heaven, when the proper time has come. But you can also imitate your master in his patience, O disciples. Therefore, do not seek rewards or compensations on earth, but do expect that moment of rejoicing in the hereafter. Keep in mind that I have descended to judge your deeds and to reveal your merits and weaknesses. I pour my grace upon every spirit. I submit you to a test and I ask you, if you possess my law from the beginning of time and I have sent you to watch over the people, to convert them to my teaching, why have you not presented me with your harvest 
now that you have returned to Earth during the consummation of the times? I have come during this era in spirit, and I ask for your fulfillment of the precepts which I willed to you during the second era, when I dwelt among you. I seek the echo of my words within your spirit, and the impression of my footsteps along your path, and I do not find them. Have you practiced and taught love? In spite of everything, you can atone for your faults and make up for lost time, for I will grant you a new opportunity. And not only will you work for yourselves, but also for the well-being of your brethren, who will come to communicate with me in a more perfect manner during the peaceful days which are near. You have in me a tireless master and a perfect father who loves and corrects you. What would you do if I only granted you benefits in exchange for a strict compliance with my law? When I speak to you thus, you weep inwardly for your faults, and you seek a pleasing offering. You present to me the blessed children, and ask me that through their innocence I forgive your sins. And I respond to you, if you are able to cultivate their heart and conserve it in virtue, I will accept your offering. I do not want to judge you severely. Instead, I prepare you at a proper time for the elevation of your spirit, so that you may work and nourish yourselves with my word. In it, you will be witnesses to great ordeals. The elements have been unleashed, and many cities will be devastated by great disturbances, and only through the intercession of the divine maternal love, which is represented by Mary, will they be spared. You will behold the multitudes come to this nation, Mexico, in search of signs and divine evidence, and I will welcome them. I will erase from their minds every erroneous interpretation of my word, and I will demonstrate the truth to them, and they will submit to my love. Behold Mary, your loving mother, awaiting your obedience. She understands that my spirit is sad because of human imperfections, and she approaches to inspire you in righteousness and struggles to enable you to attain perfect peace. During these times, while mankind weeps and purifies itself, you will be prepared by my word to convey comfort and peace to men's hearts. Suffering will be like a crucible in which the spirit will be purified in order to be worthy of reaching me. All have received my strength, and in the greatest tests they will come out ahead. I receive your compliance for one year as I have received that of all my people. I bless your noble intentions, and every seed which has not been properly cultivated I will store within you so that you may fructify it to the point of perfection. May you know how to discern what is pleasing to me, so that you will always live in compliance with my law. Do not swear falsely. Do not pronounce my name if you are not prepared. Dignify yourselves, so that you may be recognized, and your example will invite your brethren to follow me. And I can say to them, O disciples, you who humbly come to these houses of prayer are welcome. You have come in like sheep led to the fold, guided by the voice of their shepherd. He who travels along this path, invested with goodwill, will never feel fatigued. If there are any obstacles along the way, I have provided weapons to defend yourselves. Not destructive weapons to injure your brother, but prayer, with which you are strong and invincible. I am your destiny. 
And therefore, if you comply with my law, you will all return to me. But it is necessary that you establish the means in order for you to progress along the path of your evolution. Make your word my word. It is your heritage. Acknowledge the power it contains. He who possesses it will be capable of saving a region in the midst of a trial. It is written, The earth must be shaken from one extremity to the other, and it will be necessary that in those days of darkness there will be men full of faith who will be like torches that will illuminate the path for the rest. It is not my will that these people, whom I have come to awaken during this period, sink into a deep sleep again, for the anguished cries of humanity will awaken them. And when they arise in bewilderment to convey hope to their fellow men, they will realize that these are no longer on earth, but in the hereafter. Which one of you, after listening to cries of confusion, anguish, and suffering from mankind, will want to turn his back and flee, distrustful of the power which the practice of my word gives you to do something for them? Do you not believe in my word when I have announced that during your trying moments it will be I who will speak through your lips and manifest my power through your deeds? He who is doubtful will be lacking in virtues, and also needy, as one who has nothing to give to those who ask of him. This is the third era, during which your spirit has the presentment that it will receive from the Father the necessary gifts and faculties which are so essential to triumph over materialism and reigning perversity. But in truth, I say, that these gifts have existed within your spirit from the beginning. Some have come before me, weary from their sicknesses, and others demand proof in order to believe in my presence. The first ones have realized that to come cleansed before me, their purification was necessary. These have been following me. The second group, after receiving what they were seeking, have left, not giving my word any importance, unmindful of where and before whom they were. And others, who came certain of finding only physical benefits along this path, on finding themselves before this banquet provided with spiritual nourishment, felt disappointed, and they also departed in search of better pathways. These will take a long time to realize that the kingdom of the spirit is not of this world. Nevertheless, I welcome everyone. There has not been anybody who has been denied an entrance when knocking at my door. I say this, for there will be someone who will also knock on your door, and it will be I who will humbly knock as the needy does. You ask, Master, how is it possible for you to manifest yourself as the needy outside our door? And I say to you, do not be surprised or think it impossible. I will arrive secretly within the hearts of the poor, of the sick, of the defeated and the sorrowful, knocking at the door of your generosity, and I will say to you, ease your mind and spirit in order to benefit from the teaching which I have revealed to you. This is the time in which you will learn to practice, explain, and live my doctrine, which you have received within these houses of prayer, and which tomorrow you will arise to spread among mankind. Within my word, I speak to all my children, whether they are present or absent from this manifestation, 
whether they have been on Earth or whether they are to come in the future. May each one take from it according to his needs. During this period, this doctrine will be the light which will guide mankind toward the path of truth, because men have closed their eyes to this light. And in truth, I say to you, the blind cannot guide the blind without stumbling or falling into the depths. The spirit of truth is within each one of my lessons. Take advantage of this period of my communication safeguard my word zealously, and you will never be disinherited. My love will triumph over the hardness of your heart. The door of salvation remains open as it was during the second era. Come, and through it, enter the pathway which will guide your spirit toward the promised land. The leaf of a tree does not move without my will. I have come to communicate with you. It has been my will to do so. And within its profoundness, my very high designs exist for each one of you and for the universe. During this period, men purify themselves through great suffering. And from this sinful humanity of today, Tomorrow, there will appear the generations who will communicate from spirit to spirit with my divinity. Those who reach that period will be amazed at the greatness of my work and the fulfillment of my word. Then they will behold children teaching, indoctrinating, and testifying on my behalf with true spirituality. Also young men and adults, leaving behind them enjoyment and worldly pleasures in order to dedicate themselves to the practice of my teachings, and proclaiming that the period in which they live is the one announced by the prophets. Before such examples, those who today have listened to my word with indifference and disbelief will feel ashamed. They will not hear my word through the sinful and imperfect human faculty, but they will listen to the voice of the Lord within their conscience. You who hear me had the privilege of listening to me by means of this communication, which, although very elevated, is not the most perfect. Ten years still remain, and in order that tomorrow you will not grieve for lost time, take advantage of it, for afterward a period of greater elevation will begin for these people. If you do not safeguard this word today, afterward, when this manifestation ends, you will visit these houses of prayer with this dress in your heart, to beg the Father to speak to you to go back to communicating through a human faculty. But that will not happen again. You will observe that those who were my spokesmen for this manifestation will have remained silent, and their only advice will be that you elevate yourselves spiritually. It is my will that you do not violate my mandate. I do not wish that when you approach me, I will have to say, Depart from me, for I know you not. Otherwise, your spirit will endure a hard restitution. I speak to you of spiritual lessons which are within your understanding, but still there are some who doubt my word. What would happen if I spoke of divine manifestations, or if I described eternity? Then you would say to me, What are you saying, Master? that we do not understand. I entrust my new prophets to you, those who will foresee something of the hereafter. They will give you their testimony of these spiritual teachings, and they will predict events that are to come.
This is my lesson, O disciples. I will not prolong it, so that you may not become weary, and I will have to repeat it on another occasion. But if you wish to benefit by my teachings, redeem yourselves and put a stop to all evil or vice. You will realize then that egotism, hypocrisy, vanity and materialism will gradually vanish from your hearts. On the other hand, you will begin to follow a true charitable course, one which does not require any reward. You will be offended and amazed at not returning that blow as you did in the past. Then you will elevate yourselves toward your master. Filled with gratitude, you will say to me, Lord, only you can teach us these lessons and give us strength during these ordeals. I am the true vine, and you are the branches. Therefore, impart the same fruit which I have given you. My peace be with you.